<clears throat> All right, wonderful. Hello, everybody. Traders, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, I'm very glad to see all of you here today. My name is Yaroslav Burchenko. It is April the 12th, and today you guys are very lucky once again, just like last week, because this strategy, the Friday strategy, which we're going to discuss today, is very, very, very similar to what I use on my graph. So if you guys just uh, uh, have a look at my graph, oh, wait, wait a second, whoa, 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 before we get too far ahead, let me know if you guys can hear me and see me. Uh, I see that you guys are active in chat. We do have a poll going on about which uh, moving average do you use, exponential, simple, or weighted moving average. Uh, the difference between them is very, very um, little honestly the difference between the EMA and the SMA just visually from what I have seen is just this little um, if you guys can look at the last two candles you see how see even this graph doesn't show you so well it just changes the first little uh, bit of where the asset looks um, just to show you guys what I'm talking about in practice. So in order to let me know that you guys can hear me and see me, all you have to do is put a plus in chat. Uh, awesome, thank you Angie. By the way, everyone say hello. Our lovely Angie is in chat today, uh, taking all of your questions. So if you do have uh, something that you would like explained a little bit better, maybe I don't cover it in detail enough, you can go ahead and ask that in chat and Angie will cover that for you. So just to show you what a simple moving average of 100 looks like compared to the um, uh, so the exponential moving average is yellow and the simple moving average is a hundred actually that difference is massive uh, so you can see there the the difference is in how it calculates the opening and closing prices so the simple moving average is just basic uh, open uh, plus close divided by the amount of candles whereas the exponential moving average it adds uh, more exponential figures in the calculation and weighted moving average that's what I was talking about in, in the beginning is it adds a little bit more um, of a mm, leniency to the first few candles of the graph and once again I do want to put on the weighted moving average for you as well let's go ahead and get rid of maybe the 200 so weighted moving average with a period of 100 will look like like this so something in the middle in between them <clears throat> uh, the indicator or the the strategy that we're using today is called the Friday strategy it is available to our advanced users right here and this strategy is pretty simple it's pretty straightforward I will go into detail for you uh, we have the likes of the 5 EMA so just like you saw on my graph remember I had the 50 I had the 100 and I had the 200 and what those are are just different periods because I predominantly trade on the one hour excuse me the one day graph I need um, I need something that gives me a broad look right I, I write a lot of analytical material um, I do a lot of administrative things and so I need kind of a broad look of the market and that's why I have those larger period moving averages for those of you that are looking to trade intraday and you want to have several entry points and several exit points uh, you can actually have let's, let's go change this to a currency uh, this is an FTT trading strategy so we're going to be using the FTT platform today uh, also I want to drop down the duration to two minutes so this is going to be scalping and basically you have the same kind of uh, moving averages you have a short period moving average which instead of 50 we use five you have the 13 EMA uh, which is almost twice the five which I use the 100 and then we have the 55 which is um, similar to the 200 period moving average so basically you have uh, the same kind of scope, the same kind of breadth, and why do we use the three period moving averages? Because it shows us when we have a short term trend, when we have a mid term trend, and when we have a long term trend, and when they change. When they change, that's usually when we have some indications. Now, I do want to direct your attention to this is a simple cross of the moving averages so basically whenever the five this purple line is our most important line so I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little bit bolder when the purple line crosses over the orange line 
or when it crosses over the teal line, that's when we have our signals to buy or sell. It's pretty simple. You guys want to keep your um, amount that you trade relatively low. You want to maybe use half a percent of your deposit, maybe 1% if you're feeling very confident, if you're feeling like the market is going in your favor. Now, this is a reversal strategy, guys. This is a reversal strategy. So it means that if we are, um, not necessarily, not only a reversal, but it also allows you to trade when there's a correction. But still, a correction, what is that? That's basically a reversal. And so whenever there, like as you can see, in a predominant uptrend, this strategy does not give you any kind of, of entry signals. And so what you're looking for is you're looking for a cross of the moving averages, like we have one here, two minutes. Go ahead and open that up. I am late, guys, have a look. Uh, my candle should have been open right here. So on this cross is when you want to be opening the trade. I just know that uh, after a big impulse like this, we finished the correction here. Uh, I, I don't wanna get into it. As we can see, the, the trade is already moving up against me. Uh, again, no trading strategy is 100% profitable. You're going to have some downside to any strategy. And so that's normal. You should expect it. And that's the reason why I say you don't want to use more than 1% of your account when trading. Let's go ahead and see if you guys have any questions. I do want to sh uh, give a warm shout out to some of our um, very um, dedicated viewers, the ones that are obviously making the best results in trading. So I want to give a warm welcome to Mustafa Nouri. Hello and welcome, sir. Good to see you. Priyesh Kadam. Hello. Welcome. Uh, Tashar Patil, uh, also uh, on deck. And Brian Macau. Welcome. So if you guys have any um, any questions, go ahead and ask them in chat. So yeah, that was that I whiffed that trade very, very severely. Let's go ahead and see if we can pinpoint some good entry points where we will make some results. The trading strategy is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I always recommend you to look at a higher time frame, like we're in an uptrend here, so opening it up to the top side would be a good idea. And we have the cross. I do want this candle to close, so we'll just wait uh, a little bit longer. But uh, the trading strategy is very, very effective. You can add uh, an oscillator of your choice to this and increase the time frame. The time frame that you want to be using is from one minute and up. So because this is a live webinar, I'm, I'm going out of my comfort zone, out of my um, out of the area where I know I make money. The longer term period that you use, the better your results will be. So this is another thing that uh, I want you guys to keep in mind is that if you are looking at these webinars and you see that the trades are not going in my favor, obviously that's a clue. That's a clue that trading on the shorter period uh, duration, the shorter time frames is a very bad idea. So, um, we are going to, guys, if you'll excuse me for one second, I will be right back. Hey, sorry about that. So I just wanted to, um, just some technical issues uh, in the background noise. So this trade did not look like it was going forward to us. This really worries me. If you can see that the slope is, is downward, um, this was a correction, but then the correction just finished. I would have liked to see maybe um, after some time another jump higher. Uh, we could attempt to take it. As you guys saw, the hourly trend is higher. Um, but on the one minute graph, we can't seem to, to, to climb up um, at all. So if you guys have an asset that you would like to have a look at, remember we are trading on the one minute graph. I will write this down and then come back to it a little bit later in my trading journal. And then we will come back to this asset later. Pound yen. All right. I'm just looking at what the uh, short term price action is. Uh, Karan Thapar, when you open FTT trades, do you have a specific time of the day, like trade one to two hours at this time today? That's an awesome question. You are on point with that for sure. There is a window, a specific window during the time of day that I recommend trading. Um, but that may be different for you. Like uh, because I'm a volatility trader and a trend trader, I want to be trading when the um, when there's a 
uh, a market, a big market that's open. So a big market would be uh, London time, uh, any time during the European time. We did have the cross right here, you guys. Um, we'll take it just because the strategy says so to take it. Um, but I really feel like the downward momentum is, is quite strong. Like there's a shift uh, to the downside. Uh, it can really be seen in the candlestick structure right here. And the fact that, you know, they're making lower lows. As you can see, we're struggling to make higher highs. Like this is our first high, but then we consistently made lower lows here. And what that means is that there's a drag. There's, there's, there's a lot of sellers in this market. But I do want to, you know, stick to what the strategy says. The strategy says to uh, buy. Ooh, this may be a good trade. So we have the cross uh, during the previous candle right here. We, we initiated the cross. We're finishing it up right now. So the Euro CAD, the CAD in general, guys, is a very, very strong currency. If you're trading this strategy, uh, make sure to, um, to follow up on the news. The CAD uh, across the board, uh, tomorrow is the Bank of Canada interest rate decision where they're expected to raise rates not only 25 basis points, but at an entire 50% or yeah, half a percent. 50 basis points, that's a massive, massive shift in monetary policy. So uh, the Canadian dollar across the board should be getting stronger. And one of the currencies that I particularly am looking at to trade for the long term is the CAD yen. Uh, also to the top side, uh, we have a rate of return of about 80%. So make sure to watch that, guys. Uh, both of our trades, if you follow the strategy, they may um, actually pr surprise you with the good results that they use. One other thing I forgot to tell you when we start, when we have a cross, like in this trade that, that I just opened right now, when we have a cross of the uh, shorter period over the l super long period, so whenever the five crosses the 55, like we had right here, that's a very strong trading signal, very strong trading signal. So, um, uh, so we have the pound yen right now closing in profit. Congratulations uh, to me. Um, the reason is whenever a, a shorter period crosses over the longer period, the more longer period, that is usually a strong signal that we are um, that we're shifting a, a massive trend. But as you can see, the massive spike here, it could sometimes, um, you know, uh, sh shift the dynamics uh, against, you know, against you. So 13 seconds, uh, let's go ahead and wait it out, see what this uh, this trade will end like. Uh, really volatile market. Again, I do want to be looking at uh, Japanese crosses. Come on, three, two, one. Ah, it didn't go through. All right, all right. Let's see if we can find some more entry points. So uh, probably would have been a good entry point somewhere around here. Uh, but as you can see, this would have been profitable only if you set the time frame to five minutes. So that's another thing that you want to uh, keep track of is that if you're trading on a longer period, like say not one minute, but you're trading on a one hour time frame, you want to have the duration something where uh, you can understand um, the the dynamics of the market just count out how long it takes for this uh, trend to change if you just count out one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so about 12 candles is how long a single impulse is once again we can do the same here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So this one was a little bit longer, 17. Obviously you can tell that this one is even longer. What about our uptrends? Let's see how long an uptrend takes. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So again, somewhere in that golden area of about 12 to 20, uh, that's how many um, the periods you wanna plan. So if you're trading on the one hour graph, uh, you wanna do the same kind of issue. You wanna count out what the average is for or one impulse and then put your duration somewhere in the middle. So if it's 12 hours, if it takes an entire impulse 12 hours to play out, you want to be trading somewhere around three to seven hours uh, of the trade duration. That will have the best kind of result for your trading. So CAD yen on the minute graph, I don't really see uh, an entry point. I don't think we're gonna we're gonna get one. Um, I do want to trade this to the top side. So actually, let's sit and wait because the, the last trade that we sat and waited for, it gave us the best results. And that's what I recommend you do. That's why I gave you that suggestion. Look at the hourly graph because if say we were looking to sell from one of the top areas, um, I would be hesitant to do that. The global trend, the daily trend, the daily trend, particularly what we're looking at in the hourly graph, the daily trend 
trend is up. So if I were to take an uptrade here, it would have better results um, in the long run for me. So here we do have that, that opportunity. Uh, the cross came out during this candle and it appears that we're moving higher. Again, I really, really recommend trading the, the CAD and the, uh, why we're trading against the Japanese yen is because one, it's one of the weaker currencies out of the G7 uh, that is available um, to trade right now in the current geo-economical uh, situation that we have in the world. So I'm going to continue looking for additional trades. Maybe I will have additional recommendations and suggestions for you guys. Um, just to finish up on the question, Karantha Bar. So yeah, trade during a big market open if you're looking for impulses, if you're looking for volatility. Um, if you're trading, say, channels, perhaps the best time to trade would be during the uh, Asia Pacific time, like when the Japanese markets are online. The Japanese um, during that time, a lot of markets are range bound, so you can buy low and you know, excuse, yeah, buy low and sell high. Uh, so, I, I would love to take this trade if it were to stay around here just a little bit longer. If this was to come back down to the blue line, I definitely would like to take the trade. I do see that there's an opportunity here. Once again, the Japanese yen is one of the weaker currencies that we have, and I will take this trade um, uh, a little bit ahead of time. So EuroCAD, let's see what we have for the European Canadian. Uh, so we did miss the entry points. We had one entry point here, one entry point uh, right here, excuse me, right here and right here. So if you were to open during any of these times, once again, I do want to direct your attention that you see this green line, it would have messed up my two period, my two duration trade, maybe adding it one more. Again, I do not trade on the one minute graph, guys, ever, except during these webinars. So this is one of the reasons why my results have been so poor. And that's one of the reasons why I don't recommend trading on the shorter period moving, uh, shorter period uh, timeframes. But Let's get that out of the way. This is one of the things that you can, you know, kind of notice if the two minutes are not working for you, raise it up to three, raise it up to five. If you have better results trading five, remember, um, I can't afford to do five because the webinar is half an hour. I would definitely be doing the five minute if I were you. Uh, it, remember, we counted out on the one minute graph, 12 to 20. So five would be right in the middle of that. Seven would be right in the middle of that. There you have a higher expectation. You have a higher um, possibility of making positive trades. Nothing on gold, nothing on Asia Comp. So buddy, I lost more than, oh, whoa, that's a huge loss. So mafioso gaming, but I've taken out profits too. Losing is part of trading. Always trade with extra caution and care is what I'd suggest. Absolutely. Uh, mafioso, all I can say is I wish you good luck, my friend, in earning back those um, losses. Once you do, once you start earning money from trading, it's one of the best feelings in the world. Um, it definitely is one of the best jobs that, that, that are out there, but it's also one of the more uh, psychologically difficult jobs. Mm, I do want to take this trade, guys. Have a look at the Aussie Swiss franc. Uh, I may have opened up uh, way, way, way too late. Uh, we had the initial um, suggestion. Remember I showed you guys here that you, when we have a cross of the 5 and the 55, that's usually a strong indication that something is changing. Uh, there was a lot of chop, um, but it appeared that that the chop was finally over and the daily trend is of course down and we uh, once you get used to the strategy and you start looking at the um, the indicator from a different point of view I increased it to a one hour time frame and as you can see the the Aussie Swiss franc has been using the 55 as a level of support right here resistance right here and same thing here resistance resistance and we already started the move down again it may have been predominantly um, but the the probability that we use that level as resistance and I did increase the duration to five minutes so that gives us a little bit of breathing room uh, the probability that that level of resistance held is very high and that's why um, the the trade right there should be in general a, a good idea where do you follow the news? That's a really good question. Uh, we previously had a um, an economic calendar, but you can use the economic calendar from Trading Economics. I recommend using Trading Economics if you're trading the news and you want like really, really strong, um, you want really fast and you want precise information. For ease of use, I would recommend using uh, investing.com. It's very intuitively easy to understand. Their filter is much more easier to, to use. And um, 
uh, just just in general, it's 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 an easier platform to understand visually. So I would recommend uh, one of those. My issue with investing is that sometimes the news comes out and they give incorrect amounts. Uh, to me, as a uh, as a as an analyst. Uh, that's unacceptable. So I use uh, trading economics, but for somebody that maybe is new and just wants a, a, an easily understandable picture, go ahead and use investing. <clears throat> so Aussie, Japanese yen, this could be a trade. Let's have a look at the one hour graph, see what's going on. Uh, this is an uptrend, so I'm going to skip over this, guys. It just increases the probability in my favor, right? Looking for a sell right now, technically, this could be a good sell, but as you guys can see, this kind of chop, when it's flat chop, the previous trade that I took with the Aussie franc, uh, this is kind of downward chop. You guys can obviously see we're making lower highs, boom, 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 lower highs and lower lows, boom, 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 boom. So that was the basic thought process that, hey, over the period of five minutes, um, we were already overstretched. Like you can see that after such an overstretch, if it were to stop right here, guys, have a look. If the, if the decline were to stop right here, that would be a correction. The fact that we engulfed the entire entire candle right here we took it over this is an engulfing pattern this means that we're changing directions I didn't explain this enough to you guys that was also part of the thought process of why to open the sell trade right here because we we engulfed it completely covered it and broke down below it so that's a change of trend again just sitting here the randomness of the markets is exactly what we are faced up against with here today uh, if, if the randomness will go in our favor then hooray if not uh, I have given you the, the information that you need to be successful on a longer period um, of time and on a higher time frame. Guys, make sure to vote on the um, make sure to vote on the poll so that we can uh, kind of gauge what our investors and what our traders enjoy doing. Wow, have a look at this. The US dollar just crashed. And it may be a good idea to buy. Let's have a look at what it what it did during a previous crash. Like we're just in the middle of it. We're, we got our last two um, last two candles were part of the were part of the fall. So it usually takes at least three or four candles to to finally get out of the fall. And so perhaps by the end of the webinar, we have about five more minutes. Uh, perhaps we can take so about. Uh, the U.S. dollar is also expected to grow, also on the back of fundamental analysis. Come on, 13. Oh, that's massive. Come on, 7, 6. I don't think we're going to get that. That's a shame. The randomness of the market really uh, did take over. I mean, was there any way to predict that spike? Probably not. Probably not. Unfortunate that that closed in that direction, but that's all right because the the strategy does work much better as you use a higher time frame. So this may be something to consider. I think this might be the last trade that we're we're doing. So in a in a downtrend, we had uh, initial a double top formation tilted to the bottom. Uh, we had. A previous previous low and then during this kind of interaction price did not um, did not make higher highs again a nice little indication that perhaps we're gonna go lower um, and so I think we'll end the the um, the webinar with this trade again the Canadian dollar is definitely something that I would recommend to take oh I wish I just one second farther um, this is actually going against the Canadian dollar both of these trades I opened up against the Canadian dollar. Which again provides you guys with more entry points when we come closer to tomorrow's interest rate decision. I wish I didn't take this trade. All webinar long I was talking about how weak the Japanese currency is and then I open a trade in the direction of the Japanese currency. Uh, in order to 
save myself from becoming red like a tomato? I think I'll read your guys' comments. Sir, when are we going to see other events like tournament? They make trading so fun. Absolutely, Mustafa Nuri, I agree with you 100%. I love the tournaments personally. Uh, I love participating in them. And we also have uh, different competitions between uh, our analysts as well, which I also think is fun. Um, for right now, we don't have any of those events planned. So just stick tight. Make sure that you guys are subscribed to the channel. Um, we do have uh, lots of events coming out. We're gonna have a um, we're gonna have a Q and A session with one of our star traders, Soymia Roy. And also make sure to check out our other social media uh, pages because they are packed with um, with with lots of good content. Also, there's a, a, a Limb Trade blog. Uh, you guys definitely should check that out. There's an in-depth article that gets written every week about what's going on in the markets. So if you're just, you know, logging on, if you're just looking at, you know, hey, what's going on in the market, uh, it's usually a good idea to start with kind of uh, a written analysis of past events and kind of future forecasts. And that's exactly what you can find on the blog. Um, going on. Uh, is price action better than indicators? Um, my um, my recommendation with this Sigma rule, it's a good question. A lot of people have that question. The, the problem with price action is, would you ever go to the store and say, uh, give me a bag of carrots or give me, you know, give me a bag of tomatoes? No, you always would want, you know, give me a kilogram, give me two kilograms. Would you ever buy, say, spices with, you know, would you buy salt or peppers? Um, just say, give me a handful, right? You would never, you would always say, you know, can I have 300 or 500 ounces or can I have, you know, half a kilogram of this and this. And that's what indicators are. It's a way of measuring what's going on. I always, always, always recommend using indicators. I recommend experimenting with them. I recommend trying all the different strategies uh, that we have because it's, it's very, very, very helpful to use a measuring system. And that's what indicators are. It's a mathematical way of measuring price action. And so I'll leave you guys uh, with that. We will uh, maybe wait for the two trades to finish and then bring up our tally. So, so far we had, oh my goodness, we had one trade in the positive. I was so certain that there was, that the amount was better. Let's go ahead and have a look at it. Show on the chart, you guys can click that. So to the bottom, it had reversed immediately after we opened the trade. Same thing here. That's strange, how did we even open this trade, guys? Have a look at this. There was no cross of anything, that's, that's strange. Let's have a look at this. So probably due to this cross, we opened up the trade there. Uh, this was, how did that not close in positive territory? All right, here we caught the start of the change of the trend. That turned out pretty good. And our first trade for the day, yeah, also just right on the spike. Interesting, very, very interesting. Wow, what a terrible day. What a terrible day of trading, holy smokes. Anyways, I recommend, guys, before we putting on any money on, on any strategy, go ahead and shift to the demo account. Make sure that you uh, test out the, the strategy uh, using the demo account. If not, oh, come on. <laughs> Let's end the day on some note of positivity. Uh, make sure to test it out on a demo account so that you can have a better uh, understanding of what the time frame you should use, what the duration you should use, and that recommendation goes for absolutely yes! Yes! <laughs> that recommendation goes for absolutely any new trading strategy that you use. Again, what I was doing here, I was using very cut and paste, uh, minimal uh, entry parameters. You want to experiment and find what the best entry parameters would be for you. And again, out of my experience, I would like to use something at least one hour long uh, and using um, 
at least a time frame of one hour and a duration of at least uh, three or four hours. What point should I note in my trading journal? Oof, Quran, I think we'll leave that question. Go ahead and ask, ask that question uh, in the comment section below after the video because uh, during that time, or, or I will be able to, to write all the parameters for you and you'll be able to copy and paste them in your Excel sheet. So go ahead and write the, you, uh, the question about the trading journal in, your, uh, in the comment section below. Other than that, you guys, I wish you much better luck in trading than I had today. It was a pretty rough uh, trading session uh, just before the market opened. So in right now, we have the US markets open. So maybe you would want to try uh, trading on stocks and uh, try trading. So in two minutes, they'll open. Uh, try trading stocks on the demo account, especially during the first hour of trading. That's the homework you guys have for today. This next one hour, go ahead and start playing with the demo account. Start going back and forth with the uh, different time frames and different assets. And also you'll understand how the stock market is different from currency trading as well. So that's the homework for today. Tomorrow we have another webinar. You guys make sure to come to that webinar. We're gonna discuss how to trade the earnings season. We have banks like um, we have all of our bank stocks uh, uh, like uh, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley. These guys are going to be releasing earnings today and tomorrow. No, excuse me, tomorrow and after tomorrow. Uh, so make sure to come to that webinar. It's going to be one hour before this one started. Uh, make sure to check it out as I will have a lot of good information. We'll trade stocks and I will show you the historical chart patterns that you should be watching out for during uh, this trading. All right. Thank you guys so much for coming. I wish you guys good luck trading out there and see you all next time. Peace.